Look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is this is so <laughs> this is Avin children, bro. <laughs> Guys, it's been a good four years since Final Fantasy VII Remake came out and we started making battle guides and what better time than to get back into it with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now in this video, as tradition, we're gonna start off with Cloud. We're gonna talk about all the cool things that he can still do from Remake and all the new things that he got in Rebirth and how you're gonna utilize them. But first things first, of course, you're gonna want to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any other updates because we got lots more coming your way. We're gonna be doing Sephiroth next. And then two weeks from now, we're gonna be able to play as every other single character besides Yuffie and Kate Sith, so you can expect some guides for them too because they got a whole lot of stuff and while we do have a limited kit there's still quite a lot of things to talk about here there are some settings that i would like to go through for you guys because uh if you don't have the same settings i have some of this stuff won't work and there's one really important one that you got to focus on uh first things first for the combat settings make sure you have your shortcuts set up if you want to play with shortcuts that is i mean this is how i typically run mine right here and now we're going to go into system options gameplay and one of the first settings we're going to change is we're going to make sure combo targeting is set to free by default it is set to fix and this actually has ruined a lot of people's interest in final fantasy 7 remake initially because when this is set to fix you cannot swap mid combo string to another target and start hitting them you can't manually do it unless you switch it to free and then you can freely hit one enemy jump to the other enemy hit the other enemy another enemy so much better trust me do this if you didn't do this in remake you might want to go back play remake and try this out it completely changes the way the game plays trust me on this if you've been playing grand blue fantasy and you're really used to having your abilities tied to r1 and blocking with l1 you might want to enable this enabling this does it so that it swaps your r1 to being your shortcut abilities and your l1 to being your block but if you don't mind that just leave it disabled by default now we're going to talk about the camera for me my personal preference i like having the camera max out all the way i just like to see the entire field of battle i know some people might not like that so feel free to run it however you want you don't need to do that i have all four or five of these camera options on i think honestly the attacked target correction is a very good thing to have especially if you're not very adept at moving the camera around in the middle of battle and it can get kind of annoying to have to do that and feel kind of clunky so this will actually correct it and face you towards that target so you can actually see them responsiveness i personally like four so people play on five i feel like five is a little bit too fast and just kind of feels weird three is not bad too but that's by default i keep it on four it's just okay for me now this is very important so in the original final fantasy 7 remake by default in this game too you're set to r the right stick for the camera controls this makes it so that when you move the camera it actually switches who you're targeting it's very annoying to have this on it's really frustrating so in remake they also had this other option for menu controls where you use left and right on the d-pad to switch between the targets much better in my opinion but in rebirth they added an even better one and auto camera so if you read at the bottom right there it adds a new feature the camera will follow the target when not actively controlling the camera this is very perfect i know a lot of people are having com i'm leaving people are leaving comments right now in this demo and don't know that this option exists this is for you guys this will make it so that when you're targeting the enemy it actually will follow them follow the enemies and without you having to move the camera around you won't have to do it as much at least and lock on switching i like direction input rather than switch in order direction input makes it so that when the enemy is in front of you if there's one to the right you're going to switch to the one to the right it's not going to you're going to press right sometimes and it'll go to the one on the left depending on the order of where the enemies are direction input in my opinion is the best way i take screen shake off while it is does provide a really cool effect it'll make it very difficult to like see things and graphics i keep it in performance you can totally play in graphics if you want the issue with it is i mean yeah performance is blurry let's face it square enix you got to fix that it does not look great at all it's this game is way too beautiful to be looking the way that it does in performance however the controllability the functionality of the characters the game's fluidity is just way better in performance and yeah you just got to play it on that and other than that everything else i don't change i mean you could adjust this however you want but that's not really that important so now let's talk about cloud so cloud's regular square attacks function the same exact way where you have your four or five hit combo and on lighter enemies it'll actually launch them up and in the middle of his uh square attacks you have your hold square function which is the same animation but it functions entirely differently now you'll see 
the holding square animation it cleaves enemies and any enemy caught in the ring of the cleave if they're light enough cloud will pick them up and group them together so let me see right here i'll show you guys boom see that it pulled the enemies right in on cloud hands down a very great change i use this move a lot i used to use it as an extra hit at the end of cloud's combos to just give him an extra like thing right there you see right here, he just kept them it's so perfect this is going to group enemies up especially in team combat later on when you have a full party and also when you get other abilities as cloud like for example if he gets um finishing touch in this game if if that is a limit break i'm pretty sure it is that's going to be really good to group the enemies up now we're going to talk about cloud's punisher stance punisher stance is his uh triangle punisher mode when you see you're in punisher stance it'll be highlighted in the bottom left and say operator mode while you're in this you actually get a parry cloud can hold the block it's the same way in remake if you hold block it's gonna parry the enemy's attacks some big attacks it won't parry that unfortunately and it has an entirely new animation see right there it's, it's hitting both of them you can actually like hit if there's like five enemies small five enemies you, you can totally just keep juggling them over and over again it, it it does have a very good effect in that way r.i.p to disorder in punisher stance the first hit of punisher stance is actually cloud's move from remake called disorder which i absolutely loved this move and big rip because because of the fact that this is now integrated into a melee hit it no longer is an ability that you can abuse and use so for those that don't know disorder was one of cloud's best moves in remake it launched smaller enemies in the air and upon its hit it would refund atb that you spent on it so you could spam it and cheese enemies with synergy just like tifa could in focus strike and also another rip to that move too because that also doesn't refund atb anymore but disorder would let you swap stances simultaneously and had a harder hit if you used it while you were already in punisher stance you can basically use that to switch stances for cloud and deal big big damage now disorder is the first hit of cloud's heavy strike in punisher stance but it's still very good and technically does give atb the entire punisher stance animation is a lot longer than it was in a uh, remake it just feels like it just keeps going and it links it, it links back into itself pretty seamlessly and not gonna lie it does deal crazy damage and staggers pretty quickly depending on the enemy of course and just like in remake cloud can actually hold down square while in punisher stance to go into a two hit combo that will give him the berserk buff the berserk buff will actually increase cloud's damage by 30 percent but also while it is a buff it also makes it so that you take 30 percent more damage as well it's a high risk high reward buff if you guys remember those fury rings that i absolutely love so much i slap those on every single character because with the fury buff even though it is a defensive risk you deal not just all around more damage you will pressure enemies faster you will deal slightly more stagger it's not a whole lot and you can stun lock enemies much easier with it so that's why i put three fury rings on characters cloud has it built into his kit by default but i prefer to have the fury ring still on him because you would have to technically run up on every single enemy and land this in order to trigger it and you see how long it lasts it's not it's not that long it really isn't that long you can always keep refreshing it but typically by the time he casts an ability it won't send anything off i could totally see them nerfing the fury rings inside of rebirth and maybe even berserk as a whole because it was very broken but of course they also did nerf uh magic in general uh shoot actually sephiroth is the one that has the magic uh the aga spells but the aga spells now cost two atb to cast instead of it just being one so big nerf to that the best thing about punisher stance cloud keeps his parry now when you're in punisher stance you can just block and he will parry pretty much every single melee attack that comes across him big attacks it depends on which ones but for the most part it functions the same exact way and deals a really moderate amount of stagger now going up against this enemy i can show you guys a little couple of things right there if you perfect time like if you precision tap the triangle attack sometimes you'll get like that delay right there you saw it still dealt 21 damage to me that's because i didn't time it right however if you time you could actually get it you could even get it while holding it too let's see oh i didn't get it that time let's try to do it again buddy there you go perfect time right there you see immune it knocks the enemy on their ass and it doesn't deal any damage to cloud you're done 
But also you could parry if you tap the triangle button at the right time. That window right there, that little window right there where Cloud shines a little bit. If you tap it perfectly and an enemy hits you there, you'll be immune. There is a little bit of a delay to it. And he also gets more attacks off of that too if you, if you get the perfect precision on it. But if you get it like later, like this, you'll still take damage and he only hits them once. And he also deals less overall uh, precision. But again, you could do that by perfect tapping triangle or perfect tapping R1 while in the stance. Let's see if we can go for it right here. That's a three spins. Oh, I missed it right there. Come on. There we go. See, that was a perfect R1 right there. But you could also get it with the quick tap of this or that. Now, what I am a little disappointed in, though, pair, Punisher mode has been nerfed slightly because since synergy moves are tied to your R1, and which is your block, you can't just mash Punisher mode and go into it. That's what I used to do. I used to be able to like just tap it and go into it, and it would look like that, but that's not how it works anymore. See, like if I'm holding block and I'm mashing it, it's not going to uh, switch Cloud into it, unfortunately. That was a thing in Remake, but it doesn't function the same way at all because Synergy skills is tied to R1. But now, in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, every character has a precision block. See, you just hold R1, tap R1 at the right time, right before you get hit. You can kind of spam it too, like if you get really good with the window time. <laughs> okay, this actually this enemy is a pretty good uh, practice dummy for it right here. You can just keep doing this over and over again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Screamer enemies are the ones to practice on. <laughs> okay, I'm getting better at it now. Now this isn't exactly a new detail. If you remember in Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission, Yuffie's DLC, when she was introduced as a character, they actually implemented this into her kit and. It, and hers functioned differently. It didn't knock enemies down. She would take no damage, and she also gains a defensive buff. It might function the same way for her in this one, but everybody I've seen, uh, Sephiroth, I've even seen in the trailers with like Tifa and Aerith and them, the perfect block. I'm calling it perfect block, but it's called precision guard, I think. Will knock an enemy on its ass and deal a lot of pressure damage to it. Precision blocking. But again, any character can do this. Cloud can do this in or out of the stance. He could do it in the middle of battle if you're fast enough. And what's also really cool is you could actually... You could do it against enemies. You could practice against this one too. You could also do it against projectiles. If he would shoot a projectile at me. Come on, I know you can do it. Oh, too, way too early, way too early. I thought he was going to do the fast projectile. There we go. You could do that to projectiles, guys. It's so silly. I love it. I Actually, it's not silly. It's perfect. What am I talking about? Oh, that was way too close for me to gauge that. More defensive options is a major plus for Final Fantasy VII. A uh, big complaint from myself and a lot of people where there weren't enough defensive options uh, for every character. Now every character has technically a precision block parry. They can negate projectiles. What more do you want? That's actually really good. Also, in the demo, you can find a purple material that I'm probably going to be using on every single character. It actually enhances the window and timing of your precision blocking. No, seriously, this thing is actually really good. I'm gonna be putting a clip on the screen right here just showcasing just how much crazier the timing window can get. It's much more forgiving. I also slapped a level boost materia on it thinking that, okay, maybe if it got a level, it would probably be a little bit more, uh, give me a bigger window, but apparently not. It doesn't give you a bigger window. It does give more stagger damage to enemies, which is great, of course, uh, especially for like the demo and early game stuff, but uh, in general, the window does get a lot better. It's easier to manage. And in my opinion, probably going to be a very solid material for people to use just to cheese out bosses. Unfortunately, in the demo, when you get precision defense material, there's not many. There's only like two other enemies you can really test it against. The little grasshopper enemies and then the actual uh, the material keeper boss. But hilariously enough, you can actually precision block trine. <laughs> I don't know why. That's just so fucking funny to me. A whole brand new inclusion for Cloud is that he could blade beam enemies at will. No, seriously. If you are launching projectiles with a sword, dude, there's nothing better in life than that, right? <laughs> to do this, all you got to do literally is just dodge and mash square. Oh, he hit me in the last one. You can dodge away too and hit enemies with it. It's so good. 
It's really, really good. The last hit will uh, hit enemies multiple times. It puts like a dot on them. See, boom, 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 boom. It actually does kind of like the Aerith Tempest fully charged effect, which is pretty dope. And it's pretty cool. It doesn't actually miss. Like if you, if, if an enemy is like moving, it seems like it's going to hit them no matter what. And not only can you use this on the ground, you guys can actually use this in the air. Yes. Look at this. <laughs> you can use this in the air, bro. And you can use it an infinite amount of times as long as you're dodging, guys. But wait, guys, it gets even crazier. Hilariously enough, you can literally stay in the air with Cloud forever. I... <laughs> I'm just mashing circle. Just circle and facing in any direction. All you got to do is just literally mash circle in any way. And you see how long up he stays there? You can actually just keep going this way over and over again. <laughs> uh, it's too funny. If the ground was... If there was like a rock nearby here, you'd actually be able to like... Uh, cheese that a little bit more. But how do you go in the air now with Cloud? All you got to do... And you can do this with everybody, I'm pretty sure. You gotta just tap circle and hold square. He will launch one of the blade beams, but he can stay in the air. And again, guys, that's literally uh, dodging. And then holding down square. It puts Cloud in an aerial state. It's honestly the biggest improvement in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth from Remake, in my opinion. The, the aerial combat in Final Fantasy VII Remake was so lackluster. So annoying. Like, fly, fly, flying enemies were just so ridiculous. It was such a chore to fight them. You just didn't feel fun fighting them at all. But literally, I mean, look at this, bro. This is... <laughs> it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted more aerial combat and they went ahead and they gave us the sauce in this game. Because in Remake, you only had three hits you could do with Cloud in the air and there was no mobility for defense and you can get knocked out of the air easily. You can get knocked out of the air easily in this one, but you actually can uh, dodge around and prolong how long you stay in the air. It's just, it's so well done. Like look, against these enemies, I'm just gonna go here. Uh, because they're in the air, I think Cloud is just gonna like stay in the- oh wow, I dodged into the direction of that, that's my bad. Look at this. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is this is so <laughs> this is Avin children, bro. <laughs> How are you gonna keep dodging though? You wanna make sure you're choosing a direction to dodge. If you just mash circle, if you just tap circle with no direction, he goes straight down to the ground. You need to be pointing the analog stick into any direction, and Cloud will literally uh just keep on dodging an infinite amount of time. Especially if the enemy is like an aerial enemy, he'll stay in the air with them. The grass enemies, like sometimes he latches onto them and he'll like focus on trying to hit them. And you guys will see right here, even against enemies on the floor, you can do this and it'll keep Cloud in the air. It works so well. Grounded enemies, aerial enemies, you can literally go in the air against any of them and it's beautiful. And you can just keep on raining down projectiles on them too. While you're in the air, you do have some other options besides dodging and blade beaming and also regular attacking. You could also regular attack, by the way, like this, just over and over again, by the way. You could also use abilities while in the air, chat. Yes, you totally can. This is an aerial braver, and it deals more damage than a regular braver. Oh, that was actually a crit. Anytime you're launching blade beams at an enemy, you could actually uh, hold down square to charge in at them. Like that. Anytime that they're doing that, you could just literally just hold down square and he charges in on them. And there's actually two different abilities you can use in the air. You can use Braver or you can use Triple Slash. Braver does more damage it uh, while you are in the air. It'll deal more damage, of course. And Triple Slash hits pretty much the same way. It'll like go between both of the enemies while you're in the air. It actually looks even cooler. Let me find let me find some enemies that have like three of them in the air. Or like at least split them up, right? Alright, let's go with triple slash here. Boom, boom, boom. You see, like that's so cool. <laughs> We're doing aerial combo shit, bro. It's ridiculous. While you're in the air, you could also go into Punisher mode, but the problem with that is, I mean, it's not a big problem, but like you just get one hit. You knock the enemies down, and then you go back straight into your Punisher hit. So 
while you are in the air. And I'll do it again. You go with that. It just literally you slam down. And he hits them hard. And he'll he'll basically slam them down and knock them back up. It's a pretty cool combo. If it's a fight you want. Yeah. Ooh, look at that group up. All three of them grouped up right there. And let's see. If I braver them, will they all hit all three? It will. That, that move is really good. That's going to be a great tech to use. The only unusable uh, ability in the air is focus thrust. Unfortunately, that would have looked really cool in the air. But for maybe it doesn't land as well in the air because uh, it's a straight path and you can os probably miss enemies quite often. Probably why they did that. And my favorite change is just how much easier it is to get a damn limit break in this game. Precision dodges, I think, raise it up pretty well, but we'll uh, we'll try going with some parries right there. Okay, that's more minimal. Let's try, uh, let's see. I know if we stagger, we'll get a lot. You saw how much that was? Staggering enemies, precision blocking enemies, just in general, being on the defensive side of things, it really can boost your limit breaks a lot. There's a lot of times, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably experienced this in the demo, but you're, you've been able to get like back-to-back -back limit breaks super quick just because you were precision dodging and precision um blocking things which is a big complaint in remake i mean it felt like majority of the times you were not getting a limit in fights i do wish you can kind of like uh retain the limit break over and carry it over into another fight like in the original final fantasy 7 but i understand why limit breaks can get kind of broken in this game now we got to talk about some of the synergy abilities right so now when you're holding r1 not only are you blocking but you are also oops you are also having access to the synergy move so like cloud and sephiroth have one with a uh, void shatter which i'll show you guys real quick if we can get this dude pressured all right cool he's pressured so we're going to void shatter void shatter actually deals a lot of stagger damage apparently if you land it Show them what we can do. wow that was basically instant stagger it Let's really does deal a lot of pressure damage holy crap and the other one we have is counter fire and synergy skills you're using them an in infinite amount of time they cost no atb now they deal talking. less damage but they're basically like free moves that you can utilize uh we'll see if we could actually parry his tornado attack no, you can't. Instantaneous. It's all you. Let's finish this. Give y'all a little bit of a sneak peek into the Sephiroth. Boom! Sephiroth is stupid OP. Rightfully so. Rightfully so, though. Honestly, guys, Cloud is so much better this time around in the game. Not like he was bad before. I'm gonna it's going to take me a little bit to get used to that. You could also, like, dash through them. I noticed that, like, when you go into Punisher mode... I think it's like after you parry. Let's see. We'll get him out of there and I'll do a I'll do a punisher mode parry. I'll do a standard block parry. I think. Yeah, you go right through them. That's kind of cool. Wow, look, he's actually being tossed up. <laughs> okay, so when he's in pressure, maybe you could actually juggle him around a little bit more. That's pretty cool. Splat. Ooh. It's kind of a messed up angle right there. <laughs> now let's use everything we just learned with Cloud in this battle. Ouch. I'm gonna keep doing it to you, fool. Oh my god, <laughs> you gotta use Sephiroth. Sephiroth gets in the air so much easier. When we're done. Of course. Try to mix it up a little. 
Oh, I should have did that earlier. Also, uh, see Sephiroth. It does cost two ATB to use a uh, Aga spell, which is that sucks. And from the top rope. Ooh, <laughs> that looked really cool. Oh, he's going to try now, right? I'm trying to tell you some here, fella. I dare you to hit me with trying, sir. <laughs> That's just, is that just funny to me? Like, I, I find that absolutely hilarious in the, in the best ways. But guys, that is how you play as Cloud in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. At least in the very beginning. We're going to be doing advanced guides for all the characters once the game fully comes out, of course. But we're having a lot of fun. I've been really enjoying Cloud's gameplay in this. He functions just as good as he did in remake but somehow even better regardless of the fact that they did remove disorder and who knows maybe it comes back as an individual ability i doubt it but we'll have to see they really did a lot of fine improvements on the game's overall system that inherently just buffs the entire character roster in itself like every single character got a buff because of the defensive capabilities now and the way that it universally functions across the board. Now, if you want to see more of Sephiroth, who I got you guys covered on next, hit that like button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy videos are on the way and you don't want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.